So it should it is recorded, it's being recorded, right? I don't understand if it's being recorded. Uh, I guess um, can anyone check the YouTube link which was sent out on the uh, let me see, I can check it myself. I guess, um, yeah, it's being recorded, so good. All right. Uh, let me give you a brief uh, uh, introduction to many people about the approach taken today. See, I was reading Madhva Bhashya for this particular 2.18, where uh, Madhvacharya mentions about Tattva Masi area and um, it seems like just a um, word jugglery saying that okay that um, uh, you know this is Advaita meaning is not correct here so this is the meaning uh, according to Madhvacharya so it becomes um, more like a word jugglery but uh, I mean, when I remembered uh, Dr. Anantranga Acharya teaching, teaching me Tattvamasi um, uh, Tattvamasi area in Chandogya Upanishad, that was um, when I was probably like 35 years old, like 30 years back. I found that there's, there's a profound uh, uh, information hidden in this section. Chandogya Upanishad Tattvamasi, when my grandfather requested uh, Dr. Anantranga Acharya to teach me some Upanishad, we didn't even know what he's going to teach. He, he said, I'm going to teach something to you which is so fundamental. If you know this, eventually you can understand other um, sections of uh, Upanishads. In fact, um, a lot of the core ideas in the Upanishads you can understand from this section. That's what he said. And without asking what he would, uh, you know, what do I want to learn? He taught me this Chandogya Upanishad section. Luckily, I found his son had made notes on this and even made PowerPoints on this. Initially, he thought, why should I dump all those, so much of information to all of you? So, um, one aspect, right? I personally believe the method given to be my one of my gurus, Sri K. S. V. Swami. He likes to understand Vedanta as it is. So when he takes Vedanta, which was given from our uh, ancient rishis, who originally realized this Tattva Masi or um, any kind of 32 Vidyas given in the Upanishads, these were all realized by great rishis far earlier than our Acharyas who are like Shankaracharya, Ramanujacharya, Matvacharya, who came much later. So, my Guruji, Sri Kesvi Swami said, first understand the heart of the Rishis. How do you understand heart of the Rishis without knowing good Sanskrit or without, without knowing even the, the, without knowing even when these Rishis uh, existed, the context of how they realized the mantras, how do you understand them? There comes a big problem because these the rishis were there several thousand years back. So then I thought, okay, the only way to understand these rishis is through our acharyas, uh, 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 acharyas uh, explanations. None of these acharyas wanted to tell you something which is untrue. They really realized and felt that this is what is the truth. And they found what they thought is the truth and then gave it to everybody, right? So we cannot just throw away uh, some Acharya and say these views are not right without understanding what they are. And KSV Swami, after uh, studying all these systems thoroughly, he came to a conclusion that Truth is complex and there are different ways of looking at truth. The same Himalayas can be looked from China. The same Himalayas, Mount Everest, can be viewed from um, um, what do you call it, south of it, that is from India. 
maybe from Nepal, uh, it looks different. The same, so an ordinary physical entity like a mountain uh, slightly may look different from different angles. So Vedanta is not simple. Atma Jnana is not simple. It is very complex and subtle. So for that, you need to have patience to understand different Acharya's views. You can come to your own conclusion later, but don't just take one view and a deception. I am telling you, which is probably no Acharya will tell you. Why? Kesvi Swami is a separate person. I like his view and I became very influenced by his view. So I, I look at it from different perspectives now. Right? But if you ask your own Acharyas belonging to a particular uh, system of thought, your own Acharyas, what would they say? Look, for now just learn our Sampradaya. You may belong to Ramanuja Sampradaya. They would say, just learn our Acharyas' views first. Don't go into other Acharyas' views. You will get confused. Similarly, Madhva, Mata may say, um, Madhva Acharya Mata people may say, first um, learn our own Acharyas' views. And the rest of the Acharyas' views may be wrong. And you will get confused. Why do you want to get confused? So, this particular class is not for the beginners, not for the people uh, who don't want to look outside. I know of some people, even belong to this group, thought that we cannot deal with this kind of approach because you are trying to understand all these systems in different ways and it is going to be very complicated. And uh, we get confused. Why would we want to even go to your class? So some people don't like this approach. Uh, so what I am saying is, be prepared to thoroughly understand. Like how you understand science. When you understand science, you say physics, you look into views uh, given by Max Planck, Schrodinger, um, Einstein, Newton. You take different views of science. And you don't be, you are not upset with anything. We try, you try to reconcile. There may be issues it's hard to reconcile between Einsteinian physics and Newtonian physics. But somehow you say they're all physics. Why? Physics is more complicated than you think. If physics is only Newtonian, then all this, you know, bomb and nuclear bomb and other things and, uh, uh, you know, the relativity um, and all these principles invented, found, discovered by Einstein would be useless, would be forgotten as if it doesn't exist in science. You cannot have such a uh, one-directional, unidirectional views because reality is complex, Brahman is complex, Paramatma is complex. It's the very the very first uh, couple of Upanishads, Kena Upanishads, it says, if you know, if you think you know Brahman, you don't know. Tat vidita, vidita, vidita adhi, it says. It is bigger, higher, more complex than what you know. So we are coming to a section where it is complex. So be prepared for a bumpy ride, but stay calm, you will find out what you want. You can take any of these Acharya's views, fine, but you will understand what the other Acharya's are saying. If I just take Madhva Acharya's views now and say, oh Madhva Acharya's thought that uh, Advaita view here is wrong, Advaita view here is wrong, and things like that. then. Even if you are still sincerely a follower of Madhvacharya, what would you think? Oh, what is the big deal? If I say something um, like, um, you know, uh, uh, they, they went to a master's degree exam and there were three people, um, some, some, some Ramakrishna Shiva, right? 
and uh, Shiva won, and uh, Shiva uh, beat all this Ramakrishna, and then he got first rank in master's degree. So what? This Ramakrishna may be a simple, uh, you know, student who didn't do well, who didn't know much. What's the big deal in Shiva beating these th these two uh, these two students? So what happens is, if you don't know who the uh, opponent is, what are the views of opponent? Are the views of opponent so stupid and um, simple and uh, uh, worthless? And if such a worthless uh, opponent is argued against by Madhvacharya, your know, Madhvacharya's value is unknown to the world. It has, it has become, it has no value. So you have to understand if these three Acharyas argued against each other, give value to, uh, to what they have done. Shankarabhasya is not easy and it is not throw away. You can't just push Shankarabhasya and say, oh, there's nothing here. There is, everything is erroneous. You cannot say it so easily because it came from a tradition long established. It came for some particular purpose. That is why we are going to take this approach by studying all three impartially. That is why if I have any misunderstanding regarding any particular point of view, I go ask an expert in that point of view, like Prabhanjanachar for, uh, for Madhubhasha or uh, um, um, Nagasampige for Madhubhasha or some other Advaita expert to understand the Advaita view properly and some Vishishta Advaita expert to uh, understand Vishishta Advaita view properly. So I don't claim that I know all these things very well. I am trying to do my best as a reporter, talking to different experts and bringing you condensed how newspapers bring information to you from different sources. That's all. Hope this approach is okay. Everything okay so far? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Just want to give this, uh, uh, as I know, you know, now we have like seven or eight people online, maybe 20, 30 people um, who are offline may also um, try to understand what I'm trying to say. And um, I just want to give everybody an approach difference here before I start my PowerPoint um, uh, show. Let me see me share. What is there here? Oh, oh my. I think this is the one. Let me see. This is the one. Uh, Learning with an impartial attitude is uh, very good for all of us. I think so. And um, I strictly believe in finding truth. That was the whole purpose of Sri Kesvi's life. He wrote a book called Satyan Mishra and Satya Siddhi later. All was his. What is the real understanding of these three Acharyas? Even um, uh, Parakala Mada Swami, Abhinavaranganatha Parakala Swami, even though he was a Swamiji belonging to Vishishtadvaita tradition, he said that I cannot ignore the other Acharyas who are all Mahapurushas. So he always went with that kind of a view. And I'm just following uh, uh, nice uh, views from, uh, from my Acharyas. Luckily, they seem to coincide with the Rigvedic statement let noble thoughts come from all directions to us. Only with this purpose, with this view, you will find truth. Even for example, uh, say, in, uh, say in the Western world or in, in scientific uh, world in general, if some good ideas come from somebody in China, you're not going to say no. For example, uh, in, uh, you know, NVIDIA, what is that? NVIDIA is a company. A Chinese is a founder of the company and that probably gained so much of value. It's almost like a trillion dollar company from nothing. It became such a big company in the chipset, graphic chipset area. Are you going to discard the technology created by NVIDIA and say those, those chips are all useless? They were all given by Chinese whom we don't like from India. Something like that. Do you do it? 
You don't. Science was created by so many scientists from so many countries. So we people always look, looked for truth in science. How can people who are trying to understand uh. Atma Jnana, uh. which is, Shalubha, what is it? Do you have any view to say? Hello? Please um, mute no, yourself. No, sorry, sorry about this one. Okay, please mute yourself if you are not asking any question. Okay, so if science, any person who reads science can be so open-minded, um, why can't they be open-minded to uh, in the in the area of philosophy, which also is uh, the focus of philosophy is to find out what the truth is for ourselves and then find the true path for ourselves. That's all it is. And that happened to me a long time back. I was also tutored when I was young, saying that Amar Jacharya's only view should be taken, no other view and all those things. Then find that, why should I believe in Ramana Jacharya? Just because my grandfather told me. I have to find truth beyond all this. Maybe my grandfather doesn't know enough. So this was the search I had. And uh, that's why we are all together here, hopefully with a common way of understanding the Shastras. Okay. Um, sure. Sure. Um, uh, so, on the, about the impartiality um, when it comes to learning something, uh, sometimes the foundation decides what is partial and impartial. Now, I was just listening to a conversation on YouTube the other day, and so a simple example was given. So, in when it comes to a bridge, for example, in German, bridges bridge has a female gender. But in Spanish or Italian, bridge has masculine gender. So when the Germans mm -hmm. describe a bridge, they're going to say it's beautiful, it's elegant, and all those feminine characteristics. Well, the Spanish or the Italians are going to say, oh, it's sturdy, it's strong, like it's, ma it's magnificent, it's big, it's, it's going to live 100 oh. years. So when your foundation itself on which that you're building is tainted based on how you are, how you are designed like uh, over a period of time, whether by yourself or by someone else uh, that who's raising you, it's going to take a lot of effort to try and see what is really impartial because we need to we need to be able to see through all these foundational issues that I as as an individual that I have before I can see what is actually impartial, isn't it? True, true. See what it is is everybody should hope for spiritual maturity, right? That's all. That's the whole purpose. So the thing is, a simple thing about a bridge when it is described in two different languages, it uh, it is so different in in a way, right? The, but the bridge is a bridge. Bridge is a bridge, and the truth of the bridge is truth. So so the yes, it takes a lot of a um, lot of thinking to um, to understand things, uh, philosophy from different perspectives. There's no doubt about it. And we have prior um, prior samskaras, which are uh, prior, um, uh, what do you call, uh, there, there's uh, some words for it, um, positioning of our mind, orientations in our mind, which only helps us understand what is good for us. Take what is good for you. Try to understand three uh, three different things and pick up what is good for you and take it and go for it. Go, go with it. There is no. We are not trying to attack any system of thought, but we are going to use our own acharyas' views or attacks. They were trying to attack other uh, systems. We are, we're going to do this because that is how you know. A particular system of thought because they attacked uh, prior systems like even Sankhya, uh, Nyaya, and other philosophers. That is what the philosophy is about. Philosophy is not an easy subject. One more thing I want to point of point out. One simple sentence Katopanishad says, Na ayam atma pravachane inalapyaha. Atma realization cannot be done through just uh, reading and giving big lectures. At the end, it is realization. So one should know 
that re final realization is the most important thing. Hope it's okay, right? Do you understand where we're going? Agreed? Uh, sure, Jay, sure. I, I agree that like I'm just uh, I'm not I'm not refuting uh, the importance of trying to understand from all the perspectives. Like I, I'm actually for it, and that's why I'm here. Um, uh, but it's just that irrespective, uh, like uh, like our, what our verse Swami says, like we gonna manja kama like karan karan ke alla manjala teri Like it's it's uh, yes. yeah yeah it's yes. going to be a problem. Want, see, that is fine. See, you know, thing that is fine. We have to, we can only see from our own perspectives. We were born in different families. We didn't choose our families. But the thing is, we are already brainwashed or um, already oriented by our family customs and thoughts and uh, studies and things like that. That is fine. Take what is good for you, to, what you like. Doesn't matter. Because just after... I, I didn't give any, uh, what do you call, um, guarantee, like Modi's guarantee or something, where after you are done with my Gita classes, you realize Brahman. Didn't I, did I give you any guarantee? No. This is just a, a, a common way. A bunch of people thought that we would spend time together to learn some philosophy, and we are learning. I am learning more than you people, I think. That's all. Okay? All right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's go further. I'm using Narsimhan's uh, uh, notes as it is because I didn't have time to edit his, uh, edit or make it easier for you to understand. So I'm going to skip through the most of his slides. I have about 100 slides, and I'm going to skip through most of the slides, just give you some idea. What Narsimhan is trying to do here is approach to approach of Advaita. It gives a general overview of how Advaita uh, works. And we're going to spend next 60, 70 slides on Advaitic view of the Tvamasi portion of Chandogya. This is the idea, right? But to understand Tvamasi, you need to understand a lot of background given in the same Chandogya Upanishad. Tvamasi, there are books written on this three, uh, three, uh, three worded uh, sentence, right? So let us try to understand the Upanishad as viewed by Advaita. So Vedas are so, uh, valid means of knowledge. So final decision is uh, of the Vedas is according to Advaita, reality is attributeless and the world is mere appearance. Mm -hmm. So reality is one, it is attributeless. It cannot be known. Reality cannot be known. Reality cannot be the knower also. That is a final state. But everything else here, it's just mere appearance. So if there are any statements which give you explanations or any statements which make some sense of attributes of Brahman, oh, Brahman is a creator. Brahman is maintainer. Brahman controls this. You have to take it in a, in a uh, what do you call, understood uh, in a slightly different sense. It is said in a relative way, like how um, you know a moving train will see that the um, uh, the things around him are going back. It is relative, right? But things uh, around him are not going back. The train is going further. That's all, right? So you have to understand these uh, um, attributes are just relative. Then this is uh, only I'm going to be talking Advaita view from here onwards for the next. So many slides, till I tell you, right? Reality is non-dual. Non-dual means there is no second reality. There are no two or three realities. Here. There is nothing. There are nothing which are two, or, uh, two things are not uh, equally real. There's only one thing which is real. Any duality you see, multiplicity you see, they are only appearance, vivarta, but not real. Vivarta means appears. The vivarta word is used in different senses. When viparita parinama is also vivarta, according to long time back, people were using in that sense. But Shankaracharya uses the word vivarta in the sense of appearance. So this appearance and multiplicity is because of our ignorance. And this ignorance has no beginning. For, for a time immemorial, this ignorance is there. 
reality is mere knowledge and cannot know or be known. So, Brahman is not the knower and cannot be also object of knowledge. You cannot see Brahman. You cannot realize Brahman in that sense. You have to become it. Now, in this, Advaita gives most validity to Ayamatma Brahma, Mandukya Upanishad, one of the Mahavakyas. Mahavakya means powerful statements. Right? Ayamatma Brahma, that is in Mandukya Upanishad. Tat Tvamasi, which is in Chandogya Upanishad. Aham Brahmasmi in Burhadharatika Upanishad. Prajnanam Brahma in Aitreya Upanishad. So what Shankaracharya is saying is, see how so many Upanishads agree with this one main principle. I am Atma Brahma. This Atma, whom we are talking about, Jivatma or something, is Paramatma himself. And Tattvamas is also that. That creator is same as you. And Aham Brahma means I am Brahman. Prajnanam Brahma is Brahman is pure consciousness. So these are the statements. <clears throat> now we are going to, <clears throat> with this simple introduction to Advaita, Sadvidya chapter, the sixth chapter of Chandogya Upanishad will be explained according to Advaita school. In Upanishad, we have a number of vidyas. There are 32 Brahma vidyas. Brahma vidyas mean methods to achieve Brahman, the ultimate, ultimate goal of life. These vidyas are distributed in the Upanishads. Their names are different. There are vidyas like Shandilya Vidya, Upakosala Vidya, Vaishvanara Vidya, Sad Vidya, Samvarga Vidya, where Janushruti and Raikwa discuss. <laughs> so in the Upanishads, it is like a dialogue between two people or a, 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 or a teacher and several students. The method to achieve Brahman, the nature of Brahman, are explained in these vidyas. Here, this whole of next uh, 100 plus slides would be on Sadvidya. Brahman is talked about as Sat. Sat is the name of Brahman here given. Sat means also existence. Sat means also Karana or the, or the cause of everything. So the, uh, the Upanishad uses the term Sat here. Now the metaphysics of Advaita, you have to understand in any of this, um, you know, if, in any reality here itself, lo locally, if you say I want to reach my soul, so my soul is the goal. You need to know the nature of my soul. You need to know how to get there. You need to go, what is causing me not to get there? So many, many things you need to know before you get to a goal. So here, Prabhya is a supreme reality which is to be attained. And that is Nirvishesha in Matra, attributeless consciousness only. Matra means only. That is Brahma, attributeless, consci uh, abstracted consciousness. Praptru, prap, uh, Prapya, Praptru is the attainer, who is the aspirant, Jivatma. And his reflection of that Paramatma in the Antakkarana. Antakkarana is the inner sense of the mind. I, um, buddhi, mano buddhi indriyas, the ahankara, these are all inner organs which are not explicitly visible to us. So these inner organs, so the, the jivatman is a reflection on this, of this atma, of this paramatma, of this brahman, he is a reflection on the inner organs which are subtle. Upaya means to attain. And upaya could be bhakti or jnana. Um, for the less capable people, according to Advaita, bhakti is utilized. Bhakti is the path for the less capable one. That is meditation on Sabunam Brahma, meditation of uh, Brahman with all the auspicious, wonderful attributes. That is a path for the less capable people. And the a knowledge of the Nirvishesha Brahman, the, the nature of consciousness or the pure consciousness is for the saints and the higher level people with pure mind and focus. Uh, and that is Jnana of Nirguna Brahman through Shruti Vakyas. So just because 
um, what do you call, you listen to some, some Vakyas like Tattva Masi, so you understand, oh, that is Brahman. You already know. Right? So the thing is, for a simple example given is, um, the, you know, 10 people went to a river and they crossed the river by swimming and they came to the other, um, other um, uh, what do you call, other um, bank of the river and they started counting each other early morning and then it was not so, uh, it was almost dark. So the thing is when they counted, uh, they counted without counting themselves and found only nine of them. And, and they were very upset that one of them had drowned in the river. But a passerby came and said that, oh, what is the problem? Why are you so upset? And these people said, look, um, one of us died in the uh, a river. We are counting and we came, actually 10 people started crossing the river by swimming. But actually only nine people ended up on the other uh, um, uh, bank. Then the, then the other passerby say, oh fool, the Shamastomasi, you are the 10th person. That means you didn't count yourself, you are the 10th person. Oh, I am the 10th person. I am very happy that nobody died in this river and we are all very happy. So the thing is, just by one sentence, their unhappiness, their sorrow, went away. Similarly, Vakyarta Jnana is so powerful. Understanding the Mahavakyas is so fund uh, fundamental. If you understand the uh, Vakyas, we realize that we are Brahman. At least the, the pe people with pure mind can do it. People with impure mind, they have to go through bhakti, process of meditation, bhakti, and all eventually they will get jnana. Bhakti will not lead to direct realization. Bhakti will only make your mind pure. And eventually you will get jnana. And then you say you are Brahman. That is the method given in the Advaita. What is the fruit of attainment? Phala. Chinmadra Brahman is only that which exists. And there will be no experience. Brahman will not experience himself also. Brahman is pure consciousness. That is known as Jivan Mukti. When you know denial of all else other than Brahman is the key to all spiritual processes in Advaita. Denial of all things which are not Brahman. That is the purpose of all Shastras. Because Brahman is always there. Why are we not achieving this state? Virodhi, Prapti Virodhi. Avidya, the Anadi, beginningless, beginningless initiance, ignorance. Undefinable. This undefinable Avidya, ignorance is there. So Brahman himself is covered by Avidya and Jiva is that person which is actually Brahman covered by Avidya or Nishyans. So there are a number of works of Advaita. So when you talk to Advaitin, they are always uh, very extreme Advaitin. So they say, oh, Vasishta Ramayana, Yoga Vasishta. That is uh, written by Ananda Vadana. I don't know. Uh, uh, even great Advaita Acharyas like Sarvajnatma, Madhusudana Saraswati, they all quote from, by quote from this Yoga Vasishta. Even um, Vidyaranya mentions about uh, Yoga Vasishta a lot. Mandana Mishra, he wrote Brahma Siddhi, Spota Siddhi, Naishkarmi Siddhi. These are all great works of Advaita. Padmapada wrote Panchapadika and Vasaspati Mishra wrote Bhamati, commentary, on Brahma, commentary for Brahma Siddhi. Brahma Sutras of Brahma Siddhi, maybe it's a comment of Brahma Siddhi, I'll check. Vimukta Atma wrote Ishta Siddhi, Sarvajnatma. There are a number of scholars in Advaita, wonderful scholars who wrote fantastic works. Sarvajnatma wrote Sankhya Prasari Raka, Sri Harsha, Kandanaka, Kandanakanda Kadya, Prakashatma Panchapadika, Narandagiri commentary on Shankaracharya Ravash. Vidyaranya, Pajadashi, Jivan Mukti Viveka, Apaya Dikshita, Siddhanta Lesha, Sarasangraha, Matasudana Saraswati, Advaita Siddhi, which is very famous. So if you think about it, after Shankaracharya, there were Sadhananda and newer people who talk about it. There are a number of scholars who wrote Advaita works. 
So don't think that Advaita is uh, well, not well tested, well, well, uh, well, well, well uh, uh, um, screened, well thought out. No. Many, many intelligent people wrote. Approach of Advaita is, we already covered this, of Sadvidya. Okay, I think I had to, I forgot to, oh, uh, Aditya Ji, what's up? Uh, so Swami, this view about uh, Jnana being the highest path and Bhakti for lower aspirants, is it a common view amongst all Advaitins? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I did not expand my slides. And I just now expanded it. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about this, 32 Brahma Vidyas, Metaphysics. Um, we already talked about it. Okay. Why is it coming again and again? Okay, here. Uh, okay, now this is okay. Sat is, the word Sat is told as the cause of the universe. It is ex accepted the supreme reality by all Vedantic schools of thought. Remember that. The word Sat, as told in the Chandogya Upanishad, is common to all the Vedanta schools like Advaita, Advaita, Vishishta Advaita, any other Advaita you can think of, any other type of um, philosophy you can think of, Vedantic philosophy, they accept the word Sat as referring to the cause of universe and also as a supreme reali reality. That is why the, the section is important. Advaita Vedanta regards this as a final doctrine. Sadvidya or the, the study of Sat. Sadvidya is discussed in Brahma Sutras prominently in, in these Brahma Sutras 1.1.5, 1. 1.1.3, 1. 1. 1.1.5, 2.4.17, 14. Point. I don't know why they said as uh, 14. Point, there is no 14. So it should be 4.1.5. One five and four point two point one. There are only four chapters in Brahma Sutras, so it has to be four, I think. So process of creation, according to Advaita, see this process of creation is uh, pretty much common to many schools of thought. Brahman is a soul cause. From Brahman, Abhyakta came in. Abhyakta is something unmanifest. So, Prakriti and Purusha somehow, Prakriti is matter, Purusha are Jivatmas. And then came Mahat. Mahat means, Mahat is the, is the causal entity just which came out of Prakriti, the first product of Prakriti, which is causal Prakriti, <laughs> you know, um, um, original Prakriti. Now, this, what we see is manifest Prakriti with all the di diversity. We see the hundreds of elements, complex, you know, proteins and, and that and rocks and water, whatever it is. We see all this variety here, but that originally was almost like original cause prakriti, and that became mahat. And there from there ahankara started. This ahankara of uh, there are three forms, sattva rajas, tamo gunas. Tamo, uh, there are three types of ahankaras, and from there. Uh, senses, sense organs, eyes, uh, 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 motor organs, mind, tanmatras, uh, sound and touch and vision and smell, and and mahabhutas are either air, fire, water, uh, earth, either the same as akasha. So all these things came from the original Brahman. See, in the science which says, there's a big bang, all is, everything is matter. Don't worry about consciousness and other things like that. Uh, that it just popped up later. So science has a limited view of uh, that. Philosophy has a everything came from consciousness. That is Brahman. So that is the idea of uh, thing. This is explained in Sadvidya of Chandogya Upanishad. Each Acharya has slightly different views on that. There are 16 sections here. And we understand the main teachings 
quickly um, so that we get the flow of um, the ideas because these are fundamental to understand the word tat tvam asi. Who is this tat? Who is this tvam? Who is this asi? See, we can say different things about, oh, tat means that. Tvam means you. Asi is you, you are, you are that. These are just things taken out of context. We have to see the mind of the rishi who thought about it and from which dialogue we are picking up the context and the, what the words were there in the Upanishads. That's important. Okay. It starts with the, we'll go to the story again later, but some important points have to be made. This is all summary only. And it's good to know the summary. Very well, uh, Sri Narasimhan has done a beautiful job summarizing and, and putting a, a emphasis on some important points very well. So we can use, copy that wonderful work done made my life very easy here. Hopefully it will make your life easier. It starts with a small story about a student called Shweta Ketu, who is sent, to, sent by his father to learn all the Vedas. He comes back after like 12 or something years, 12 or 24 years or something like that. And he comes home. Then Father Uddhara asks, Uttatama Adesham Apraksha. Because uh, Shweta Ketu comes uh, with a beaming face saying that he knows everything like indicating that he knows everything. And Uddhalaka says that, you know, you, do, you wouldn't be so proud if you had uh, understood Brahman. How can you be so proud? If you had understood Brahman, you wouldn't be proud. So he asks, Have you inquired about that Adesha? The Adesha means, Upadesha means that is the important principle. But Adesha also means Adeshta the main person who controls and dictate terms to everybody, who controls everything. <laughs> that is also named as Adeshta, Adesha. Both are same. Then he brings up, uh, in the course of conversation, he brings up, knowing what you know everything, eka vijnana sarpa vijnanam, why do you need to know the cause? <laughs> The main thing, if you know, if you know that causal entity, you know, affects all the effects of the cause. So, Eka Vijnani Nasarva Vijnanam, that is the importance of knowing the cause. If you know the cause, you know all the effects. So, the purpose is, purpose is to teach that everything is existence only. Sat means existence. And you and everything is existence only. Knowing existence, everything is known. Then three examples are indicated. If you know mud, you know all the, uh, the effects, all the, the things you can do out of mud, like a pot, a, a cup, a bowl, a saucer, a spoon, anything can be done using mud. Right? So if you know mud, a lump of clay, you know all the effects made of mud. Similarly, if you know gold, you will know all the different products of gold, like a gold chain or a gold, um, a gold ring or a gold um, crown or anything like that. Similarly, knowing iron, you will know all the effects of iron, like um, you know, nail cutter. It mentions Nakakrantana. Nakakrantana is nail cutter in the Upanishad. So um, back then they were nail cutters. So by knowing iron, you know all the products which are done using iron. So that is the idea given initially. Then knowing Sat, everything is known as entire world is Sat only. So how does the, the creation occur? It starts with Tejas. So first Tejas, the fire came up, then water came, then Anna, food came, the world. Anna includes all earth and everything. Tejo, up Anna, Teja, up Anna are the three entities which are fundamental. And then all the plurality is effect. 
Sat is the cause and Sat is one. Make note of it. Sat is one. The refutation of this, and there are a number of, in those times, a long time back, there were logicians, Nyaya theory people, there were Buddhists, there were Sankhyas, they had different views. So, Shankaracharya refutes them. <laughs> so, the elements have individual self. They are effects of Sat only. So everything in this world is made of, the physical world is made of fire, water, earth. Existence is called Sat, Sa Yam Devata. The Sat is not just existence, it's, a de, it's known as a Devata in the Upanishad. The, the Upanishad calls it as a divine deity, which entered into the elements as individual self, which is like reflection as in a mirror of water. So the thing is, the way Advaita describes this Upanishad is that there is one called Sat, which entered into everything as if as a reflection. Anena Atmana Jivena Anupravishya Nama Rupe Vyakaravani. So it became different names and forms. The one Brahman entered as the individual self. For them, individual self is just the mind in a way. Because um, there is no separate individual self in Advaita. It appears to be separate, but actually inside it, there's only one Atman, that is the Sat, which, came, which became this. See, the verses in the Upanishads have to be understood in the same way it is said. You can't, that is why it is known as Apaurusheya. It's not even like Puranas, which was Purushakrita. Puranas were written by human beings. This was Apaurusheya, unwritten unwritten by any uh, human being. So, you have to take those words very seriously and try to understand them. So, <clears throat> so Sat does not experience uh, a sorrow or anything at all. Sat is only pure. Sat's reflection is what is going through all the uh, thing. That reflection is the self and, uh, and the mind and everything. Advaita says everything, the Sat is true and all modifications are just names and forms. They are not true. They are not at the, rare, at the level of reality of the ultimate truth, which is Sat. The, all the reflections are of lower level reality. The true reality is Brahman only, according to Advaita. Now, um, why is it important? The Upanishad is very clear in understanding. This, we talked about three entities. Tejo, Ap, Anna. Tejas is uh, fire or energy. Ap is water or fluid. Anna means matter, prakriti, earth. <laughs> These are fundamental for anything you want to understand here. So, even inside the body. In the body also, these, the Tejo, Ap, Anna becomes mind also. Food. And it talks about the Purusha, our individual self is 16 parts. Choda Shakala Purusha. And his individual self is nurtured by Anna or food. <coughs> Details about what this individual self is. Through experiment, it is, it is said as, oh, you are different from your mind. You are different from all these things. Through an experiment, the Upanishad explains, why am I saying all these things? There is a lot contained in the Upanishad, just not this Tathomasi word or the sentence. A lot. It talks about when, so what happens when people sleep. Where do you go when you sleep? When you go, this is very fundamental to understand this whole idea of, you know, why are we sleeping and getting up and dreaming? We are going through this constant three phases. And according to this Upanishad, the mind merges in deep sleep. And the individual self merges into the Sat. At that time, we don't have any cognition of anything. It talks about the dream state. And in the dream state, it introduces the term Tattvamasi, which repeats nine times in the Upanishads. In section 8, 
it was taught that all the selves whether you are a king or a tiger or a or a snake or a human being any person of any kind when you sleep and go to deep sleep without any dream you will merge into sat and there are so many examples given as to how that merger occurs while you are asleep and that is through honey uh, the example of the honey bees we are not going to go through everything in this right but things are go to specific examples and there is a some river uh, ocean analogy which explains that when we wake up we wake up we all came from sat so when uh, think about the wonderful analogy that given here uh, a, a poor man is, strugg is struggling and then he doesn't have uh, any money and he tries to go beg when he begs also not many people care about him they don't even give him much money he goes hungry but after some time he sleeps fully he sleeps and he is uh, somehow he gets deep sleep similarly a king is um, is sleeping on a wonderful cushion and he has all the, the palaces and 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 he rules the entire um, you know country or something like that and he also he also goes to sleep in deep sleep nothing is known even the poor man and that king is same they all went and merged into sat their experiences are similar poor man sleep is no different from a rich man sleep once deep sleep occurs you you merge into one that one state now so the self individual self attain the causal state in deep sleep death and dissolution so the individual selves when you when they go through deep sleep they will attain a causal state the same even even during the death death is a deep sleep of one kind even when somebody is knocked down using an anesthesia and they go through some kind of a oracle they are out that is also a level of deep sleep and all these things are explained with a number of illustrations one second why is this just a second now uh, what happened here one second there's some problem here doesn't matter and there is there is um there's teaching about this how can i know the brahman is in this world how can i know brahman is in this world they give you an example here in this upanishad they look at salt water the um, you know you can the salt is inside the water you take water from here and drink so that is the still still salty you take water from somewhere else and drink that's also salty like that this brahman or sat is everywhere it is inside everything and so it says that the the, the causal principle or one reality is inside everywhere that's what is this upanishad saying so one has to have absolute faith because this is not easy to understand shweta ketu and or any other uh, student there uh, it's complex is something brahman is not known Brahman is not seen, so they are giving different examples of the salt water and other things like that to tell you what that Brahman is. Deep sleep is so not understood even today. If you go to um, scientific literature research, they don't know what deep sleep is. They just say, "Okay, deep sleep, then I can have this alpha patterns or beta patterns of this brain waves, which I can put some electrode into brain of the sleeping person and try to figure out what this deep sleep is." But there are some scratchings like the, um, you know, like um, ECG uh, waves or something which comes from the heart. So the brain also gives us some 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 signals, 
and that doesn't give you a full understanding of what this deep sleep is. So, you, when deep sleep is so complicated, can you understand Brahman? So, you need to have faith in a guru and learn. So, the Upanishadic method is to actually have faith in a realized person, not just text uh, reader who reads some text and throws some information to you, but a realized person. And then, you only then you will get the truth. So, we are talking about a complex thing. Brahman is said to have avataras, Brahman is said to have so many other things, which is not dealt with in, in the, this Chandogya Parishad. Chandogya deals it in a particular fashion. The Puranas and, and Ramayana and Mahabharata may talk about incarnations or Brahman and avataras and things like that. Here it's not like that. It talks about scientific view in a way, scientific view of consciousness. A lot of reasoning is there. Then talk about what happens to deep sleep, which will go from death, really if deep sleep ends up in death, what happens? That person goes through two several paths. Shankaracharya talks about three paths, right? Um, um, Archiladi Marga, which is the path of the jnanis who can go to the go to the higher level. Then the, <laughs> then the Pitri Marga, which goes, they have to come back uh, in another body um, because they did not reach Brahman. And the other thing is the Kshudra Jantu Bhavana, where like animals, I mean like, like mosquitoes or something, they will just die and go to another uh, um, worm or uh, insect body without going anywhere. So there are different things. Uh, and in the Bhagavad Gita, this talks about Agni Jyoti, Rahashukta, Hashan Masa, Uttarayanam, uh, and Dhruma Marga, and, um, um, and uh, Jyoti Marga or something. And um, uh, Agni is the, the light, path of light. And the, the path of darkness is Dhruma Marga. So after that, what happens to a person? That is also described in the Upanishad. But one who realizes, according to Advaita, identifies the self with existence, when you know that you are that Sat, you are that ultimate reality, if you know that, you become liberated. <laughs> you will not come back through the cycles of this um, rebirth. Now we talked about six, sixth chapter, Chandogya Upanishad, section one. What is that? Sat Vidya. What is the time now? Let me have it. Note of time, 7.48. We've gone through one hour. Uh, let me see what is out there in the next few. Let us take just a few minutes and I'll stop. <laughs> Is Advidya and Brahma Vidya one and the same? Brahma Vidya has 32 different types of Brahma Vidyas. Brahma Vidya is the higher set, the, the super set of all the Vidyas. Sadvidya is only one among them. One okay. method to reach Brahman. Vaishwanara Vidya or Shandili Vidya, they are all separate ones. For example, in the <laughs> Chandogya Upanishad, two teachings preceding the sixth chapter lead to uh, the teaching in the sixth chapter. There are two teachings which are prior to the here. The two other vidyas explained here is Shandilya Vidya, which says Sarvam Khal Vidam Brahma Tad Jala Niti Shanta Upasita. That says everything is Brahman. All this is Brahman. Tad Jala Niti Shanta Upasita. That Jalan means that Brahman is a cause, it, is, it maintains and uh, maintains this universe and it devours or dissolves the universe at the end. So, sh Shanta Upasita, be calm in your mind and meditate on this Brahman. So, that is the Shandilya Vidya. vidya. The Vishwanara Vidya is separate. The, um, uh, it is something about uh, the universal fire, right? So the, 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 
one vidya is uh, any of these vidyas can be used by a student to achieve realization of brahman okay and in the vaishvanara vidya one knowledgeable uh, about brahman um uh Okay, this is actually leading the Advaita view is actually sort of um, put in here, right? In Vaishwanara Vidya, a person who is a jnani <laughs> or knowledgeable about Brahman, if he eats, entire world is satisfied. How is this possible? This is only possible if one, only there exists one Atman in every being. There are no individual separate uh, Jivatmas. There's only one Atma in every being. Then only this is possible. The, because one person eats, everybody will get satisfied. So these kind of views are there in the in the Vaishwanara Vidya. Unless you go in depth in Vaishwanara Vidya, you won't understand what it's talking about. Okay? It is just given as an introduction in the Advaita view. Here the uh, teach, uh, 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 teaching found in the form of dialogue between father and son. Because father's name is Uddhalaka. Son is Shweta Ketu in this, in this particular section. So this, this Vidya has essential things which has borrowed some ideas from the earlier Vidya taught in the Upanishad. That is why Shankaracharya says, Vidya Yaha Sarishthatva Pradarshana Artha. This, the, the, this is an ultimate essence of the knowledge here given according to Shankaracharya. What do we see in this in this universe? Nama, Rupa. You see names and forms. And you see ignorance because you don't see yourself as Brahman. Okay. How many entities are there in this universe? What is the cause of this universe? So these are all answered in Sadvidya. And then are they all real? How and when, when did this happen? This creation, maintenance and all those things? When will it end? Why are people experiencing sorrow and also here and there a little bit of happiness maybe? Who is the experiencer? How to get rid of this whole undesirable things around us? Life sometimes is not so people ask a person who is, who is inside a hospital with COVID and not able to breathe. He will tell you, I want relief. I want to get rid of this problem. Right? We need to get rid of several things and not everybody ex enjoys life. So there are situations where we don't want this uh, experience of life at all. Now is the beginning of the story of Sage Uddhalaka and Shweta Ketu. We will go into deeper, deeper uh, aspects all this, what was told to you, is an in, in introduction and an overview of sorts. That's it. And I think there's a good time to talk, uh, to stop. And I'll one second, hold on, and show. And how many? Um, how many? We have finished 21 slides. Usually, in an hour, we cannot finish more than 21 uh, slides. This is a good uh, place to end. We will. We are. We have about hundred slides. So please be ready for the next three, four classes to go through Advaita view, Vishishta Advaita view. Then we will put Madhacharya's view in a simple, uh, like three or four, or uh, maybe one or two classes. We will summarize Madhacharya's view afterwards. That is the plan for the next few classes. Hope this class was useful. Hope our approach is acceptable to everybody. That's all. If you have any questions, comments, this is the time. Yeah, Commenters, break back at me. I have a question. You said that in the Sadvidya, he equates uh, the mind to the uh, consciousness in a uh, Atman. Did I understand correctly? It is in a way. Approximately correct. Don't worry about it. We will we will go through details and exactly say what it is. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So I, I want to put it loosely here. We'll go again and we'll describe that later. Okay, thank you. Krishna, here I have a question. Uh, in the beginning, uh, Sat actually built, let me become mini. So finally, uh, do we have to understand that uh, Shweta Ketu is the same Sat, one who built? We will come to that. There are three or four views. Your questions are very simple two-line questions. But the answer is three-hour answer. That is what is the purpose of this, um, uh, uh, what do you call, who is that Shweta Ketu, who willed? That is what is to be understood. Let us understand that. It will it will go, it will come in the uh, as uh, we go through the different bhashas on this. So the, obviously there will be different views there. For that matter, Krishna, First of all, that is not just Shweta Ketu, right? It's also us, right? We can translate that. Everyone. to say, I will. I'll be yeah. many. Krishna will. I'll be many. Uh, every one of us will. Many. No, no, no. Wait a minute. So, see, that is why this this kind of questions cannot be answered without depth. I know. So okay. see. So, so kam, uh, there the what that that ikshata there it comes that will. What is that 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 is the Brahman there. I know the question can Brahman. be one sentence, but the answer will be one year to answer. Exactly. So the thing is, we have to take, uh, as we go the sentences, even here we are condensing. Even I will not be able to give you uh, too many details. For example, I remember Dr. N.S. Anandrangacharya who taught me this section, only uh, he talk, talked about Advaita and different views also. He took 90 hours to teach me. We spent about two to three hours every day, something like 75 to 90 hours. One uh, More than a month, I had taken a vacation from um, from US. I was just sitting, my grandfather requested him to teach me something. And in my 30s, um, he taught me. And every other day, I used to go sit down in his home. And then uh, we went for about 90, 70, 90 hours. Uh, that's what I remember, 90 hours to just finish the section. So we will not be able to do that, that kind of a justice here in our small excursion out of the Bhagavad Gita Vashyas. I'm just giving you as much as I can say in just next five, six classes. Because this is important, I don't have to repeat. Unfortunately, I have some memory problem. I had uh, earlier explained some Dvaita view of the Mahavakyas earlier, and I repeated it in last class completely without knowing that I had already done it, done it before. Any other question? Try to focus on this class only. Don't go about different other questions because that will become bigger. In this, uh, in, this question, in this class, any other question related to Adiji, what's up? Any questions? Okay. No questions. We'll Swami, stop I here. Tommy, I have a question. Yeah. In the in the in the different views that Advaita mentions, uh, the different levels of reality. Uh, the, do all those reality coexist according to them, or is it like at different periods of time that it appears differently for different people? Or uh, all the lower level reality, the higher level, all of those coexist, is it for them? See, for them, uh, see the question, it depends on who is the aspirant here, right? So, for, different will be viewing reality from different viewpoints, is it? Hold on, hold on. For the Jnani who has already realized, there is only one, one reality. There is no relative reality for that Jnani. He doesn't remember his past uh, bond, uh, you know, life of bondage. He doesn't re remember, does not know the world exists, does not know anything exists other than Atma, and he doesn't even know that because he has become that. So for a Jnani, there is only one reality that is absolute truth, Sat. For an Ajnani, there are all these three levels of reality, Pratibhyasika Satya, Vyavaharika Satya. But for an Ajnani, the true reality, the ultimate reality is unknown. And can never be known also. 
So for a Agnani, only relative reality exists and Pratibhasika Satya like mirage and things like that exist. That's all. But does it mean that uh, ultimate re reality doesn't exist? It exists, but he doesn't realize it. Okay? Yeah, All right, we can stop here because it's getting a little bit late and I have to get to some other work. Hope this, this section of uh, was useful and you learned a little bit uh, newer than what you knew earlier. Or it was a good revision for most of you. Shri Lakshmi is a proper for me. I was on a proper. Namaskaras. I don't know how to get up. Stop share. Stop share.